Leverage doesn't make your investment better. It just increases your returns. People are morbidly afraid of debt. Why are you running? Why are you running? And I understand that completely. Debt has caused a lot of very, very smart people to go broke. It's a very common statement that Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger make. Our good friend Gary mm -hmm. says that he's absolutely scared to death of debt. Before you sit there and decide that debt is good or bad, remember that nothing in this world is either good or bad. It's a matter of perspective, like inflation. Yeah. Inflation isn't good. It's not bad. It just is. Debt can be good and debt can be bad. Debt can be very good and debt can be very, very bad. bad. Yeah. So let's go take a look at how they can be used in different situations. So, Mo. Yes. Give me an example of when debt would be good. I think a mortgage at a, at a reasonable interest rate. Uh, like I look at a mortgage on my house. Yeah. 2.75% over 30 years. I think that's a really good use of debt. Okay. So that's a very easy thing to say. Debt on my house at 8%. Why is that bad still? For me, I look at it and say, why would I do something like that when I know that I can get higher returns in that with my money? With this, I, I could beat this all day. 2.75? 2.75. I could beat it all day. Right. 8%? Maybe not because I mean, I'm sitting in a lot of cash. Maybe I can't beat those returns. So the first thing Mo is saying is, and this is what's very important, the biggest issue about debt is, first off, before you go any further, can I make a higher return than the debt, I'm, the interest rate I'm being charged? Mm -hmm. Look at credit cards, for example. When you have 20% re um, rates on your credit card, find me a place where you can get 20% returns. Yeah, I'm likely not beating that. Right, so that's why pay off your credit cards as soon as possible. Because you're not going to beat 20% returns. If you're borrowing at 2.75% on a mortgage, Find me places you can get 2.75%. I mean, Hell, right, right now I can go in a 90-day treasury. 4.38% in a 90-day treasury. Now, back when Mo got this loan, the 90-day treasury was 0.06%. Correct. So it was a lot lower. But do you believe that your long-term return in the life of this mortgage, the 30 years, 30 years yep. you can get above a 2.75% somewhere else? Yes. That was my thought. And I go, yes. That was exactly. I look at that thinking, you know, Mo and I do a lot of options and we make really good money on our options. We can crush 2.75%. Yeah. At 8%, if his mortgage was 8%, at that point, you're like, well, wait a second. A little, I can beat 8%. Yes, but it's a little more thought. You got to remember when you have a debt, as you pay it down, that's the return you're giving yourself. You're giving yourself a guaranteed 8% return when you pay down your debt. So my question is, where can you get a guaranteed 8% return? Hard to find a guarantee. It's very difficult. That's the thing. But now you're investing in yourself at 8% return. Yes. At 2.75, I'm like, yeah, I can find that in a lot of places. I can find that in a lot of places. A lot of places. Now, and that's the big key here for debt. So in this situation, when you have a mortgage, you need to live in a house, you need to provide shelter for your family, and do all these things. Is a mortgage of 3%, 4%, 5% reasonable to live in a home you're probably going to spend a long time with? That's probably going to go up in value as inflation occurs. I say yes. I say yes as well. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is, when you have a 20% credit card because you went to the bars, because mm -hmm. you went to sporting events, because you bought clothes you didn't necessarily need, all those things to go live a lifestyle that you probably couldn't afford, is that a good debt? No. No, it's not. And you're being charged 20. By the way, even that debt at 0%, I would argue, is probably not a good debt. Why? Because you're buying it for things you don't need. With your house, you need a you need home. It. You're going to have a payment somehow, either rent or a mortgage. So you're going to have that cost either way. Now, when Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger talk about debt getting people in a lot of trouble, what are they talking about there? They're talking about leverage. What's leverage, Mo? Taking on a lot of debt to grow. So, like, how would you calculate leverage? Uh, for personal or business. Uh, does it matter? Well, I guess not, because it's basically the same thing. I mean, if, I I'm looking at, if I'm looking at a personal... I, Example, we use trading. I use trading. We let's both let's talk about a mortgage. First okay. off, let's, let's just talk about something that everybody understands, okay. a house mortgage. Let's say you have a house that's worth $500,000. Mm -hmm. What would be a lot of leverage? By the way, I'm glad you're stumped on that one. of it? Is that a lot? I don't think, I don't know if there's a concrete answer. There isn't. Okay. <laughs> that, that's the exact same okay. thing. Because here's why. Let's say you borrow $500,000 on it. Yeah. You're 100% leveraged. Right. A lot of people would say, that's crazy. All right. What if you're Bill Gates? Yeah. If you're Bill Gates, is that a lot of leverage? Because I know 
You do interest only loans. Yeah, I do interest only so, on my house because I'm like, listen, I'm going to crush my three point three percent return. Why would I pay down any debt on it? Yeah. So, so five hundred thousand dollars. What was that? Dependent on situation. Of course, yeah. everything's been situation. Now, back in 08 and 09, a lot of developers got in a lot of trouble. Why? Because here's what they were doing: they were borrowing fifty million dollars when their net worth was ten million dollars. Yeah. Okay, and they were borrowing that money at forty-five million dollars of debt. So the market went down 10%, that entire deal was wiped out mm -hmm. and half their net worth was wiped out. That's the fear of mortgages and debts. If you have too much leverage in a market, in an environment in which there's a lot of, there could be a lot of fluctuations in price, mm -hmm. it can wipe you out completely. And that's the big issue with leverage and debt. If you go borrow money to buy a car, more power to you. Yeah. If you make a million dollars a year and you're borrowing money, I don't know why you would, but if you're going to borrow money to buy a $60,000 car, hypothetically, they offer 0%. Okay, let's say it was for 0%. Okay, put the money in a CD for five years, you'll make yeah. a, a return. Right. But if you're doing it to go get your outsized returns, because remember, leverage doesn't make your investment better. It just increases your returns. Listen to that one more time. Leverage doesn't make your investment better. It just increases your return. Now you might sit there and say, well, wait a second, Paul. Making my returns higher makes my investment better. No, it doesn't. All it's doing is actually making your investment actually probably a little bit riskier. Your investment is based on the 50 million no matter what. How much debt you put on it, it's completely up to you. Mm -hmm. But the investment itself is going to make X amount of dollars with no debt on it no matter what. So how much debt can you afford to pay on that investment? That's the big key about debt. I take on more leverage in areas that... Our friend Gary would say, like, that's crazy to do. I remember him looking at me once and saying, Paul, you shouldn't take on leverage. Well, what about 1%? Well, you know, it's like, well, that's my point. I'm okay having leverage. The question is what level? I put, I decide to put less leverage on my real estate, but have a little bit more leverage on my stock accounts. Most people don't want that. I get it. But if you look at Snowball, in the book Snowball, Warren Buffett was telling his family members, hey, don't sell Berkshire stock. Borrow against it. Mm -hmm. So the guy who was against debt was telling his family members, just borrow 20, 25% of it and live your life. Don't sell the stock. Mm -hmm. So if I believe long-term on my investments, why would I go out there and sell them to do something with my life? Yeah. I'm sitting there saying, I'd rather take on debt. And debt to me, if managed properly, if I lock in an interest rate, Good debt. right? Good exactly. Because Mo, exactly. your 2.75 is locked in for 30 years. 30 years. Happy camper. Now, if you told me tomorrow, Paul, I can get 2.25%, but it floats. I'd be like, well, what's it going to be tomorrow? I don't know. That's the thing about, and, and we're seeing that big uptick right now in those adjustable rates and, on mortgages. Of course. And I look at them and go, Oof. well, that's what caused the 08 what, problem. Don't know what the problem. People were locking in at like 1.2% for three months and all of a sudden skyrocketing to five or 6%. So it's funny. My parents bought a house in 2007, 2008, whatever year it was. In and, Tampa? Yeah. And my dad wanted to do a, an adjustable loan. And my mom was like, absolutely not. Now, it might have worked out long term with where rates went and everything, but who knows what would have happened. By the way, I'm okay with adjustable rate yeah. mortgages. The question is, how long are they locked how for? Are they on locked? my apartment buildings, I have seven-year loan, seven-year rate locks. Mm -hmm. That means at the end of seven years, it has to adjust somehow. Either I have to refinance it or adjust it. I'm okay with that. Why? Because I know in my business, I'm going to be paying down debt. So my mortgage, if I buy a property, let's say for $10 million, and I have $7 million in debt to start, by the end of seven years, I might owe 5.5 million, but that 10 million, if I put money into it, reinvest the cash flow, don't live a lifestyle, I reinvest the cash flow, that probably might be worth 12.5 million. So now I look at it going, can my 12.5 million support the 5.5 million debt I have outstanding? So here I was, I remember my, my mother, my mother years ago, Tim's gonna love this story. Years ago, my mother sat there and we were talking about the business and she goes, oh, Paul, how much money do you owe? And I was like, I don't know. Like at the time it was like $40 million and she flipped out. <laughs> I remember thinking to myself, like, why is she flipping out? Because all she heard was $40 million. I'm, I'm thinking of Mason too. Everyone oh, was, yeah. So we have a friend <laughs> and we made a video prior to this and Paul said something similar and he texted our group chat and he was like, oh my God, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, but he was being funny about it. But he did, uh, it's, the, it's the understanding of what's behind that. Exactly. So if I tell my mother I owe 40 million, all she hears is that. Well, what if I have 100 million behind it in real estate? 
that's a pretty low LTV. You go to any banker out there and say, give me 40% of my loan. They will be hounding throwing you with cash. You. They'll be throwing money at you. Now, if I said to you, well, it's based on $45 million in real estate. Nice. I'd be like, oh boy, yeah. that's a problem. Right. Because all it takes is a $5 million drop, an 11% drop in values for my entire equity to be wiped out. But at $100 million in value, the value needs to drop by 60% for me to wipe out my equity. And this is the big key. Even more so than just talking about debt. I want you to hear that everything in life is a give and take. There's no set right or wrong answer except for one thing in the world, which is get stuff done. If you want to be successful, get things done. But debt is a scary thing and can be a scary thing. If you manage it properly, dip your toe in first. I look at our investments. I'm going to hedge when things get scary for me. As my debt levels go up, I will, re I will reduce my returns to hedge. That makes sense to me. I'm not this guy who's going, let's just go. Doesn't mean I'm not going to have issues in the future. I'll probably have issues at some point. But if I properly hedge, those issues will be mitigated. Mm -hmm. And the return I'll get in excess of it will probably make up for all of that. And that's my goal here. What typically happens is people who like debt are just blind to the debt. Yep. Give me as much as I can. Throw it out there. Take as much as I can out there. And that's a big problem. We have a property in Columbus that we currently, it's currently valued all day long at $20 million. And we currently owe $6.2 million. Okay. That's a lot of equity right there. We're trying to take a mortgage now out for 12 million. Now, what if I just said this to you? We have currently owe 6.2, we're trying to get 12 million. You'd be like, oh my God, oh, you're doubling crazy. your debt. What'd you do? Yeah, but it's at 20, by the way, I say 20 million all day. We've received offers north of 20 million for this property. So I think it's probably, maybe it's even worth 25. The point is, it's still a low debt number. And that's what's key there. When I look at all these things, I look at my equity accounts. I've borrowed money against my accounts. My, my borrowing right now is 7% of my entire brokerage account and my stocks are up this year. My own entire preventive portfolio is up. I, I make options and dividends that more than cover the extra mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying. Now, I don't recommend everybody do that. In fact, be careful about that because I have sat there, I've dipped my toe in. And I think this is a good segue to saying, we talk about Dave Ramsey and people paying off mortgages and this and that. That's what makes you sleep at night don't have debt. And that's my absolutely aunt, a brilliant statement. My you, aunt is a person that she just wants her house paid off. My mother's the same way. And more power to you. You just and guess realize what? You're, you're losing on the retirement side. But guess what? But I sacrifice that all the time too. Money. I sacrifice that all the time. Like look at my new house. I just told you the other day. I'm like, you know, I think I'm gonna put more money on my new house down. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I just don't want the big mortgage payment. There you go. Yeah. That's it. So if that is, and that is an absolutely fine thing to do. Yeah, because I want to be able to go, yeah, all right, whatever. I'm not going to have as big a mortgage. The money's sitting in the account anyhow. I might as well just pay it down because my mortgage rate, I'm fine with it. It's not always going to be this clear cut. There's eight, not a yes or no answer to this. Right. And anybody who makes it yes or no, I think it makes it hard to really understand there's an in-between. Yeah. Just like I said to Gary, well, is 1% too much? Well, no. It's like, well, okay, well, there's, there's, a, there's 1% and there's 100%. Yeah. You, could, you just start creeping up. Well, is 2% too much? Is 3% yeah. too much? At where's some the, point, the line? and to me, it gets to the point of, I found for myself, when it comes to borrowing against my equity accounts, 25 to 30% felt inside of me when I did the numbers on how much it cost me to hedge and do all these things, felt reasonable. In terms of my real estate, 70% felt reasonable. By the way, most bankers will give you 80% all day. 75% for sure. I thought to myself, you know what? I take some debt here, lower my debt here, increase my cash flow, reinvest. The other thing is I don't operate my real estate the way other people do. Other people live off their real estate. Every single dollar of our real estate income goes right back into real estate. Tim's our producer here. He used to manage a property for us. We reinvested every dollar back in and some. So in a given year, if we had a million dollars in cash flow, we reinvested it back in and the property was probably worth a million and a half or 2 million more afterwards. That just shows the subjectivity. Yeah. So again, I'd love to be able to give you a die hard. This is good. This is right. All I know is this is one area in which if you can't sleep at night, Mo is right. Just take less debt, but just be aware of what the possibilities are. And if you want to dip your toe in, please do it. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. There are three things that you absolutely need in order to be a successful investor. The proper mindset, the proper emotion, and the proper process. Which ones are the most important? 